We hiked Four Pass Loop in Colorado in July of 2023. It's a 41.4 kilometer loop with 2,363 meters of total elevation gain. We started the hike around 6.30 a.m. and it was nice and quiet, not too many people on the trail. We had camped in Aspen the night before and we parked at Maroon Bells that morning. Four Pass Loop goes over four mountain passes where it gets its name from and it is within the Snowmass Wilderness area. This was our first time backpacking in the mountains and our first time at a high altitude. This was also just our third time doing a backcountry camping trip. It was a really nice time to hike because it was wildflower season in Colorado, so we saw a bunch of really beautiful flowers. It was maybe one or two weeks after most of the snow had melted, so there was still some left over, like here over the river crossing. There was still a decent amount of snow to walk on, and in the shaded areas there was still snow. This was a pretty strong current on the river crossing. I definitely was a bit nervous, and the water was really cold, but I made sure to follow the guidelines of undoing your backpack during the river crossing, because in case you fall, then you won't be dragged under with it. You can just let it go. We brought sandals for the river crossing, so they weren't too bad because we could just put them on and our boots wouldn't get wet, but the water was very cold. Like I think it was mostly from snow melt that day, so it was like just above freezing. Our first sight was really beautiful. We stopped earlier than we were expecting because it was starting to thunder and rain. And we were more tired than expected, so we didn't even get over the first pass on the first day which in hindsight was not the best choice, but again, it was our first backpacking experience in the mountains and the elevation was especially getting to me and I was having a lot of trouble breathing and going for long distances. We cooked our food on our backpacking stove. We had a few dehydrated meals, which are easy to prepare. You just pour water in and then let them sit. We had mushroom alfredo and mac and cheese. Looking good. Nice sunset and then sunrise. We packed up our site, headed off, took a few nice pictures in the morning. The mountains looked really cool with some snow left on them still. The red or maroon color of the rock comes from iron particles that have oxidized. The rocks in this area are mostly shale. We walked through a beautiful meadow area in the morning as we approached the more rocky and sandy section of the first pass. West Broome Pass reaches 3,800 meters of elevation, which is about 12,500 feet doesn't look very steep in the video, but it was pretty challenging at times. We rested at the top of the pass and ate some snacks. Clouds were changing pretty fast, and it was cool to see their shadows moving on the ground. More beautiful wildflowers across the walk between West Maroon Pass and Frigidaire Pass. It doesn't dip down too much in between the passes, so it wasn't too bad for elevation. It's only like a 600 foot difference, but you get through, to walk through like a nice wildflower meadow and you get some really nice views. We had great weather again the second day with the blue sky and some clouds, which was nice at times to give us some shade. It was really cool to look out and see the different paths winding below because there were a few other routes that you could take. 
and we could look out and see little people like ants walking around. And in Colorado, and especially this area, it almost thunderstormed every single afternoon. So around two, when we were hiking down from Frigidaire Pass, a big storm rolled in, was thundering loudly, and then hailed for a while. Yeah, we experienced some thunder hail, which was very interesting. We managed to get into the forest, but we were in the open during the thunder for a bit, so we had to rush into the forest so we didn't get hit by lightning. We saw some really, really dark clouds rolling in, so we were kind of motoring on to try to get to the forest we could see, but it was quite the race when the thunder started. This happens so frequently, so pretty much everyone says, like, do the passes in the morning so that you're down from the open area by the afternoon when it starts to thunder. Then we continued on our way and it was just spitting a bit. Spitting a bit, looking like it might continue to rain, so we kept our rain gear on. Well, it was raining decently hard. But I think the rain stopped after maybe like an hour or two, so it wasn't too bad. We didn't really get that one. So by probably four or five, it was back to sun. Another river crossing. Again, it was really cold, and this one was pretty deep and pretty wide, so. It felt really nice on your feet, though, after being on them all day. Really nice views for golden hour. At this spot, you could see really far as clear, good conditions and nice light. Lots of flowers. The second night, we camped in a bit of an open area and it was pretty chilly. We woke up and the ground was a little bit frosty. We got up pretty early, just after sunrise. Took us a while to pack up and eat, but then we started our hike up Trail Rider Pass. But a 600 meter elevation gain, 1800 feet, so it's a pretty big hike up right in the morning that we were already pretty tired. Not pictured between getting to our site and setting up our tent the night before and getting started the next morning was me feeling extremely nauseous, not being able to keep my dehydrated meal down and not being able to eat anything before we started hiking the next morning. So we hiked pretty slow. This is our last day. We had, I think, 18 kilometers to do, but we had to do two passes. Nice views this day though. The passes are just so beautiful. This Nomass Lake that you can see going down Trail Rider Pass, it's really cool. We tried to camp there, but the sites there got booked up pretty fast. It was fun going down the back side of this these passes because there was snow, so we kind of skied slash toboggan down. I went down first and went pretty slow. Lauren went down and just crashed straight into the rocks. I was not paying attention to the technique he was using. I just went for it. A lot of people do four pass loop counterclockwise, which is kind of like the default way to do it, but we did it clockwise because it is, this time of year, the snow is better to go down on when you go clockwise. And you also save your best views for later in the hike. Whereas when you go counterclockwise, you go through forest for like 10 kilometers. I wasn't feeling great on the very last stretch of our final day. So Josh helped me out by carrying my backpack as well as his backpack. And 
it was pretty tiring for him, I'd say. I also carried the bear bin in my hands going up both the passes on the last day, which we should have taken a video of. Yeah, my bag was way too heavy, like we said. And by the time we got up to the last pass, Buckskin Pass, we were very tired and we didn't record anything after Buxton Pass. It was like a eight kilometer or 10 kilometer downhill from here that took us a while and we were tired so we didn't record anything. Overall, we liked the hike. It had beautiful views. The passes were really cool and it wasn't very busy so we could enjoy everything around us and not feel like we were overwhelmed by people. We definitely want to do it again with lighter packs and more time to acclimate to the elevation. We would spend multiple nights in Aspen instead of only acclimating there for one night.